All right. Well, uh, want to welcome everyone to uh, to worship tonight. Um, again, if you can hear, why don't you just give me a wave or a honk so I know that you're with us. All right. All counted for. All right. Well, welcome, welcome to worship tonight. Uh, the Lord be with you. All right. Begin our worship in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, when uh, when we thought about doing this drive-in thing. Uh, I, I didn't th figure that by the end of July we'd still be just in the middle of this. Um, but here we are, not being together. Or at least we can see each other, uh, which is better than not seeing each other, I guess. But for now, we have still keep this kind of kind of distance for ourselves. So thank you for uh, thank you for being patient. Don't get tired of uh, of being careful. We continue our, our series uh, uh, today on this um, What's it So Amazing About Grace book by Philip Yancey. Last couple of weeks we've been talking quite a bit about forgiveness uh, and how forgiveness breaks the cycle of, uh, of ungrace in our lives. And there's certainly times where we, uh, as the one who needs to forgive someone, uh, even have to do that unilaterally when the person doesn't even... Uh, care or isn't even really involved in the process as a way for us to get unstuck or to to move on to release us from the power of ungrace. But tonight I want to talk about sort of the other side of that uh, when we are the one in need of forgiveness and some of the challenges that come with that sometimes. Uh, there's a chapter in his book that he uh, that uh, Philip Yancey calls loopholes, and that's what I want to take a look at uh, look at tonight. Uh, the premise and the problem is this, that uh, if God loves to forgive us and grace is free and undeserved, then why do we bother being good? Why don't we just do whatever we want and then later ask for forgiveness? So that's the question we're going to wrestle with a little bit, uh, a little bit tonight. Um, I like what C.S. Lewis says. He says, so just because a gift is freely given doesn't mean it's easily received, right? Um, the image is that you can't receive something if your hands are already full. Sometimes before we can receive a gift, we have to let, let go of something. And in many ways, that's where this whole idea of repentance comes in. It's this idea of letting go of something in order to be able to receive something. There really are... Um, Two kinds of people, but too often we get that mixed up. We think, well, there's uh, there's good people and there's bad people, and that's not the case at all. Or we think that there's people who are uh, are, are guilty or people who are righteous, and that's not really the case at all. Really, there are there are two kinds of people. There's two kinds of guilty people. There's guilty people who admit that they're guilty, and there's guilty people who don't admit it. Um, but we all find ourselves uh, in that sense of brokenness, whether we recognize that sin in our life or not. For a gospel or a scripture reading today, I want to share a powerful story. It comes from uh, John uh, chapter 8. It really illustrates this really well, I think. Um, early in the morning, Jesus came to the temple and all the people came to him and he sat down and he began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, making her stand before all of them. They said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law of Moses uh, commands us to stone such women. What do you say? They said this to test him, so they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger in the ground. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up. He said to them, Let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Then once again he bent down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. And Jesus was left alone with a woman standing before him. Jesus straightened up and he said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way, and from now on, do not sin again. So that's the story. Um, a lot going on there. Um, 
I mean, it really it takes two parties to, to commit adultery. I always wonder why why is there only one person brought before before Jesus here? But as as we read on, it becomes very clear this really isn't about the crime of adultery. It was about a trap they were able to set for Jesus and whether his being merciful will get him in trouble or not. So what Jesus says, he takes the focus off the woman as the only guilty party here and invites all those uh, who have not sinned to be the first ones to throw a stone. And obviously no one does anything because they're aware that there are not two kinds of uh, people. There are people that once they admit their guilt, they realize they're the same, the same people. Once you're aware of guilt, I think there is a little bit more receptiveness or you see uh, the power of grace. Repentance becomes in many ways this doorway to an experience of grace. The verse earlier in the Gospel of John, um, John 3.17, I almost like it better than John 3.16, right? John 3.17 says, Indeed, God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Sometimes we get a lot of rap for uh, coming down and making people feel guilty. But guilt is not necessarily a bad thing. It can serve a wonderful purpose. It can move us towards a path of healing. Until we admit or recognize we have something that needs changed, we oftentimes don't even seek that ceiling or healing or forgiveness. Guilt only really becomes a problem or an issue if we get stuck in that guilt or we let that somehow define us. Dietrich Bonhoeffer was a theologian, uh, lived in Germany during the rise of Nazism. And uh, he coined a phrase during that time which he called uh, cheap grace. And for him, cheap grace is grace at, uh, seeking grace where there's no repentance. So cheap grace as opposed to free grace. Free grace recognizes that there's a cost to grace and what it costs God to conquer sin and death. Uh, it costs a lot, but it's given freely. Cheap grace just takes it, uh, how, what can this do for me? Uh, and doesn't always take a look at what's all involved in this process. So Paul, when he writes a letter to the people in Rome, wrestles with this this whole question, this scandal of grace. And he, he poses the question this way. He says, well, what, what do we say about this then? Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? Right? The question is, if God likes forgiving us so much, why don't we just do a bunch and, and he'll have fun forgiving us? Right? Uh, should we continue in sin that grace may abound? Paul answers his own question. He says, by no means. And then he goes on and he gives us three different analogies to try to think about that. Um, first analogy is, is life and death. He says, how can we who have died to sin go on living in it? Um, what would seem to be a simple choice. You can choose a way that leads to life or lead to a way that leads to death. Unfortunately, it's not always uh, apparent or clear to us right off because the way that leads to death is often marketed in ways that seems very, very attractive. And we don't recognize until we're way in that this is uh, taking us down a, another path. So the, uh, the second analogy he uses is that of, uh, of slavery and freedom. He says, why would you choose slavery over freedom? But again, anyone who's ever struggled with addiction at all knows that um, that's anything but easy. Sometimes when we, we find something that we get enslaved to. The final analogy Paul uses is, is that of, of marriage and really addresses this question of why, um, why be good in the first place if I can just be forgiven if I do something bad. Um, uh, and so his, his question was how we, how we approach marriage. It says if you approach marriage by negotiating, how much bad behavior can I get away with uh, he says, your marriage is doomed. That's not the way you approach marriage of trying to figure out how much bad stuff can I get away with and still stay, still stay married. Um, 
Uh, but rather, it says, why should we bother being good? He says, because that's what love looks like. We want to do good because of this relationship that we are living in. God is not looking for partners who are, are being good out of a fear of punishment, like a slave or, uh, or something like that. He wants a partner who is good as an expression of love. God desires that, right? That love guides our relationships. That's why we strive to be good, not in order to uh, earn a reward or avoid a punishment. We strive to be good because that's what love looks like. Yancey at the end of, end of that one chapter says, if I had to summarize the motivation for being good in the New Testament, he says I, would, I could do it with one word. He says it's, it's gratitude. When we comprehend the love of God, what God has done for us, then we are going to strive to live lives worthy of that love. All right, so let's, uh, we're going to sing a song about, uh, about uh, gratitude. Uh, I think we sang it uh, about a month ago. It's one of the, I, I want to do it because it's, it's, these are short enough simple songs that we can, uh, we don't have to memorize all four verses or things like that. We can go with songs we sort of have, we all sort of have in our mind, uh, mind as well. So the song is, uh, is Give Thanks. <laughs> all right, give thanks for the grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son. Uh, we'll sing that a couple times, then we'll go on to the second part of the song. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son. Give thanks with a Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done. Try that again. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give Many ways in which we uh, we show that we are grateful, that we are are thankful. One of the ways is through our, our offerings, and again, I'm give my thanks for those of you who uh, have given so generously, uh, whether it's electronically or through gifts that you've uh, sent in or, or mailed off. Um, uh, thank you so much for that. We want to move into a, a little time of prayer, and there's a number of uh, concerns that are going on. Some of you might be aware that uh, Jim and Bobby Flats' son, John, is, uh, um, is in the process of dying. Um, I met with the, uh, the doctors and the, the, the care team and the whole family yesterday, and uh, they made the decision then to go just to palliative care. So um, I don't think it'll probably be more than a day or two. Um, so we've been talking a little bit about how we want to recognize um, this loss. Uh, and Jim and Bobby are, have been talking. There's, there's a number of things. One of the things is talking maybe just be a be a small gathering. They'd love to have uh, there. So many lives get touched there. They'd love, they'd love to have everyone be with them, and but they're going to have to somehow limit 
the number of people who can be with them and with the idea then of maybe maybe on the an anniversary of the death a year from now find an opportunity to to gather more people together uh, to do that but as we know uh, details will be be sharing that but we know that that will be coming here uh, within uh, most likely uh, a few days so certainly um, keep uh, keep uh, John's family um, in our prayers then this morning uh, another prayer concern went out Christy uh, uh, her dad is in the hospital and so she uh, um, and then she, in talking with her mom or talking with her dad uh, and mom found out that all oh, the doctors said yeah he was he went in and was seen on Saturday and they wanted to put him in the hospital then and he just decided he'd rather go home uh, and then the doctors were calling every day and, and checking on him and they finally said you get in here he's got blood clots in his lungs and in his legs and things like that so they rushed him to the Marshfield Hospital uh, which is a couple hours from where they live um, and so Christy went up there just to sort of be a health advocate to ask the questions and to make sure things happen there so we want to keep Christy and her family in our prayers as well um, I am going to be doing a, a funeral on on Saturday for Frank uh, Parkos uh, that if that name sounds familiar he owns uh, the uh, orchard over at Afton Afton Orchard um, uh, a couple months ago I did a baptism for two of his grandkids and they knew he wasn't uh, he wasn't doing well at all he was suffering from leukemia and wanted to see uh, the kids baptized and so we did that out at, at uh, the house there and so they're gonna have a gathering out at the orchard on Saturday and so again invite you to keep that family in your prayers uh, uh, as well uh, we did hear uh, some good news word of thanks uh, Mark Olson had his uh, procedure done on Monday and hope said that all went well and so we're thankful for uh, thankful for that we've got a, a new baby in the congregation that was born yesterday uh, uh, Andrew Sashchek uh, he and uh, Destiny had a, a little baby baby came about a month early so very much a preemie and it's in a incubator it's got uh, breathing tubes in and everything trying to, to help him uh, uh, I don't remember him or her I forgot now uh, help this little baby through the, the but so these these first couple days are be, there's really these critical days and so we want to uh, keep sausage family in our prayers as well and then uh, last week uh, or was it earlier this this week uh, um, Charlie Canfield uh, shipped off to boot camp uh, and so we want to keep uh, keep Charlie in our prayers uh, as they go through that that process. So let's uh, so a number of people that are on our hearts and minds and uh, and again if you have folks as well um, as you can um, uh, email me ahead of time when if you want me to name them by name in our prayers. If not, we we'll, we we'll have this time where we'll just open uh, uh, to our prayers that are on our hearts as well. Uh, let's pray. Lord, Lord God, we come before you with um, lots of people that we know and care about on our hearts uh, today. We pray especially that you be with the Flats family as they go through this very difficult time of being with a loved one as they are in the process of dying. Uh, Lord, we pray for, for peace in the midst of that. We pray for, for comfort, for strength, uh, for all that they need in the midst of uh, a very difficult time time in their lives and Lord I pray Lord we, we thank you for the body of Christ that surrounds them and walks with them through times like this we pray for the the Parkos family as well as they as they gather to to say goodbye uh, to continue this grief process uh, for Frank that you would bless them and be with them as well we we pray for all those in need of your presence with them we pray for our, for Paul Seifert um, that you would continue to strengthen him and be with him. We pray for Christie's dad, Mike, that uh, you would bring healing into his life. We give you thanks for uh, for good results for Mark uh, uh, Mark Olson's uh, procedure, and we pray for a quick healing in his life. Uh, we pray that you would guide and, and bless uh, little baby Sashek uh, that. Uh, that you would uh, strengthen this baby, um, 
uh, increase its ability to breathe on its own, uh, strengthen those lungs as it uh, begins this journey of life. Uh, we, we think of Charlie and pray that you'd be with him during this time away at boot camp and, and all the others, Lord, that we that are in our hearts and minds uh, going through transitions. We, we pray for those difficult decisions people are trying to make about school and how we, what we do to keep both our teachers and students safe and still find a way to educate and the difficult transitions that are going on with that or as each city and, and uh, uh, area tries to figure out how best to be, be careful. Uh, Lord, we pray for wisdom and for guidance in the midst of, in the midst of all this. All these things, Lord, and whatever else that you you know that we, we need or weighs upon us, as well as those things that give us great joy that we lift up in just deep thankfulness, we, we raise to you, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you now to pull out your little, uh, your little communion kits. Again, remember there's two tabs. A silver one will reveal the the host and then the purple tab will will open up your uh, um, your juice there and so we uh, we gather tonight we tell the story that we do whenever we worship how Jesus on the night in which he was betrayed took bread he gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples he said take and eat this is my body given for you do this in remembrance of me the same way he took the cup again he gave thanks he said drink of this all of you this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you now to, to share the bread and wine, the body of Christ given for you, blood of Christ shed for you. And may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and always. Amen. We do have uh, some garden bounty on the little tray out in, in front here. Uh, Ernie brought some zucchinis. Uh, if you like uh, large zucchinis uh, for uh, uh, using for cooking, stuff like that. He also has got uh, a cucumber. Uh, Karen uh, at Lundgaard's had brought some other cuc uh, cucumbers as well, some smaller ones if you don't like giant cucumbers. And so feel free to come and take a look through the produce box before you uh, you leave, we'll just create some distance so people can come one at a time and and do that. Um, and then uh, we invite you, if you have a uh, bounty that you want to bring and share with others as well, uh, it's a nice way to be able to do that. All right, well now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Or look upon you with favor, give you peace. Amen. All right, let's go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I always like to have a record here of who was with us. <laughs>